Hello everyone, thank you for watching John's Clunker Cars. I'm back at home working on the Model T again. It's been a while, I've been busy with school. But some of the goals for this trip home is to get the spindles cleaned up and do some touch up paint where I far forgot to uh, paint before. All right, the main project for today is to get these springs cleaned up and painted. I have to get these spring shackles cleaned up for the front and put those on. Then I need to get the spring shackles for the rear springs cleaned up. And we'll paint these today. And we'll paint these also today. And I'll probably do some touch-up paint on the Model T over there. Some of you requested to see what kind of paint I'm using on the front springs so they don't squeak. It's called slip plate. It's a heavy duty, all purpose lubricant paint. It's a uh, graphite paint is what it is. So that's what we're using on the springs to keep them from squeaking. So it's kind of pricey stuff, but you'd want to use it. So I'll get to work. I'm not going to let you guys watch me grind on this stuff. I'm going to be using this grinder with this wheel it works the best and these wheels last the longest so just before I was getting ready to clean up these springs I just now noticed that this tip of this spring right here is broken off the other side is good this one's broken off so we'll see if we can find a replacement for that in our spare parts I just got done getting all this stuff here cleaned up so it cleans up pretty nice. I use a wire wheel to clean all this stuff up. So I'll clean up this one right now and then I'll be on to these leaf springs. Okay, everyone. Been a little busy on the wire wheel. I got all this stuff cleaned up. All the spring shackles. I'll paint those. I'm going to use mineral spirits on the leaf springs to clean them up before I paint them because I ran out of acetone. But this stuff works just as well. I'll paint them over here again. Got it all nicely cleaned up. I looked in our little treasure area and I didn't see another spring that matched this one. It seems like the springs used in 1926 were thicker a little bigger than the other years so I'll get back to work all right everyone to change brakes drum brakes on a Model T is super easy there's a spring here that was attached and before you take the differential off the car I suggest you take the spring out first it's way easier but to take the drum brake off it's all in one piece so you just pull it apart like that there's little tabs on the backing plate and it pulls right off and that's what it looks like we'll buy new ones of course but yeah not so hard to do brakes on a model t don't we all wish drum brakes were like that nowadays or any brake it's way easier than disc brakes if you ask me so we'll get this all cleaned up and maybe we'll crack open the differential I'm not sure yet so I'll get some of this other stuff off first all right last night my dad and I got these wheel seals off the axle here they're basically a thin steel cup but inside of the cup there's a flat washer and behind this flat washer is a piece of felt and that slides onto here and that's what keeps the axle sealed from all the oil coming out and it's a good system that works but when they've been on there for a while you'll probably have to cut it off like we did and split it with the chisel a little bit then it'll come right off and you can still get these new so that's what we're going to do so later today i'm going to disassemble this differential but before that has to happen, I need to clean up my mess. So I have a clean work area. I got 
these leaf springs painted with that graphite paint. I think I'm going to touch them up a little bit. Now another thing I wanted to talk about is the front end caster on a Model T. Forgot to mention this in the past video. As you can see the axle has a slight angle to it called the caster. Now that's to help with handling but the how you achieve the caster is important. My dad explained this to me. You see this piece here? That is at an angle. There's a machine boss right here and that has to be on the back side just like this side. See it's on the back side and these parts right here are what causes the caster on this car. And that's the same thing with this Model T right here. These are set to the back and that causes a caster on the car. So that's very important if you're restoring a Model T. Make sure you have those two separate parts in the correct spots. Okay, now I'm ready to work. Look at this nice clean workbench now. Now what we're going to do once I get those grease caps out, these grease caps right there, we're going to set that up in this hole so we can work on it. And that's what makes it pretty easy to work on. So another thing I will do is I still need to tighten this, put a cotter key to that, and I'll touch up this paint before I leave today. I got all these little leaf string, leaf spring clamps all painted up so they're ready to go. So I'll put those on too. I'm gonna crack the uh, differential in half. I got one bolt out covered with grease, so kind of hard to get on them. Got to wiggle the wrench on there. Of course, all the nuts get stuck in the socket, so what I do is screw the bolt back in it, pull it out. Yeah, 9 16 is too loose. So they are half inch, they're just covered with junk. We'll loosen them with wrenches and then go after it with that electric ratchet. Kind of have to be patient with this stuff. There. That one's loose too. Okay. I'm kind of curious to see what it's going to look like inside. They don't look new, but they look good to me. We'll know more when we take it apart. I know there's a big roller bearing here, one here, and the same thing on the other side. So, curious to see how those will look. camera tripod this time too which helps so you guys don't get dizzy <laughs> and I did spray these a couple nights before so they did loosen up a little bit 
Okay, we got all those bolts out. So now, we should be able to lift that off there. You gotta be kind of tall for this. I'm six feet, so I can do it. See all that gunk in there? That's probably from it sitting for a while. I'll set this in the oil pan. Here's what these roller bearings look like that I was talking to you about. But we'll have to clean all these bearings up in the parks washer and take a close look at them. See how they look. I'll let you guys look at this a little closer. Doesn't really look too bad if you ask me for being 92 years old and probably never taken apart. It's just pretty filthy dirty in there. But we'll get this shaft all cleaned up. We'll be able to see these bearing surfaces. A big thing to watch out for Model T's is this keyway here that holds the wheel on. A lot of those, those can be broken off and it's, the wheel doesn't stay on how it should but it turns okay when I do this yeah that's pretty exciting I know you guys are waiting for the engine to be taken apart but we're not quite there yet we want to get some the rear end all done, put on the car to get some of these parts off the workbench. So you don't get all these bolts confused. That's what I'd like to do at least. Yeah, these gears look pretty good. Looks like they're set up in the factory just right. Now another thing they did back in the day is they safety wired everything in. They use castle nuts. There's no such thing as locking washers back then or locking nuts. So they safety wired things in and works okay. It's still there. So yeah, it looks good. Okay. Another thing keep in mind on this is this stack of plates here now if I'm not mistaken this helps with the pinion gear and ring alignment this is what gives you your spacing for that I think not sure but when you put these Model T's together back together it's very important that you take note of these two holes right here because those line up with these pins inside of here and you can get replacements for these that's what holds this pack of plates together here now if you lift this off underneath there's a pin right there too I don't know if you can see it it's right here and that goes in the bottom of this so when you assemble this those pin holes have to be back because if it's crooked, I don't know, you're going to have some trouble. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I know about that is you're going to have some trouble. So, I'll continue to disassemble this. We'll have to take all this stuff to the parts washer. We got some new solvent in there. Thank you, Dad. So, we'll get all this stuff cleaned up. It's going to be lots of cleaning for the next few days. But that's the way it is. When you restore cars. 
to be doing lots of cleaning. But yeah, to get this out, I believe there's a key right there. I'll have to read the manual more. That's how I know all this stuff. Read the manual. Okay, I gotta get back to work. All right, everyone. This is where I'm gonna have to leave you. I have to go back to school and graduate college, so my dad may take this apart later and I'll show you what happens after that. But overall, I think we got plenty of work done on the Model T this trip home. Got all those painted, we'll have to order some parts. I'll have to paint the front end a little bit. But this project is slowly coming along. So thank you for watching everybody. Thank you to all the new subscribers. And if you haven't already, you can subscribe if you want. Like the video and comment if you'd like. So thank you everyone.